Hello everyone, my name is Seri Saban and this is a video tutorial on Autodoc Vena. Autodoc Vena allows us to perform small organic molecule docking, which means we try to measure the binding between uh, an organic molecule and a protein. If we tweak a little bit the command we used uh, Autodoc Vena with, we can perform uh, virtual screening. And virtual screening is when we have many different molecules, many different organic molecules, and we try to see which one best binds to our protein of interest. So Autodoc Vena is actually not very complicated. It's, it's, the nice thing about it, it's very simple, as long as you understand what parameters you need. Now remember, we don't have a perfect energy function, uh, which means any result that comes out of Autodoc Vena or in computational biology in general, you always have to take it with a grain of salt, which means any result that comes out, any result that you generate, you must port it onto the wet lab. You have to test it in the wet lab so, so you can make sure what you are observing or what results coming out of your computer or simulation are correctly represented in reality. So whenever you are designing an experiment, make sure that you put this in mind. So let's start and see how we can use Autodoc Vena for uh, small organic molecule docking. In this video, I will show you how we perform virtual screening. We will look at a protein from HIV, and this protein we will refer to it as a receptor. I will show you how to download this protein and how to prepare it for Autodoc. Then I'm going to show you how to download small organic molecules. And once we prepare them and um, we decide which, uh, which location we should perform the search. Uh, I will show you the code, how to loop through all these ligands so you can um, test the binding of each ligand onto the, onto the receptor. And then, of course, you take the uh, strongest binding ligand and, well, if it was a real research, you would have to port it into the, uh, the lab and test it, thoroughly test it, so you can make sure that what you're observing on the computer correctly reflects what you're observing in reality, or, or what you get in reality. Um, so let us start. This is a script that I wrote that makes setting up the environment for a virtual screen using Autodoc Vena much simpler. You can find this script on my GitHub page, um, the notes project. So I'll put the link in the description. It's uh, github.com slash sarisaban slash notes. Now, because this is just a collection of scripts and I wrote it in a Python program that makes it much easier to handle instead of typing each script uh, manually, I didn't put this as a separate project. Rather, I just added it to my collection of notes. Uh, here are some instructions that you can read, uh, but I will go through all of them in this video. So let's start with getting the receptor. The receptor that we're interested in is the 1HVC protein. So what I will be referring to as the receptor would be the protein of interest, uh, because the protein that we will be docking will be termed as the receptor, and any molecule that we are trying to dock onto the protein will be termed the ligand. So let's hop to H, 1HVC. And this is a, a protein, uh, uh, an HIV-1 protease. Now, we are lucky in this example because there is already a ligand docked to this structure, making the search area for us more or less known. If you are starting a project from scratch and you don't know where is the best place to dock a ligand, your um, your setup will be slightly much more difficult because after we download this structure, we are going to convert it into a, um, a different format. Then the immediate next step would be to set up the search space, the, the search box, the location where we are going to search for the ligand, well, the binding. Now, you can technically search the entire surface of the protein, but that's not recommended because the computation won't be very accurate. What you should do, what I recommend that you do, is that you you do some background search, some literature literature review, and try to identify if the site you don't know it, if it's unknown to you, you have to identify which site you want to target. For example, is it the binding site? Is it a sensitive site? Is it something that would disrupt the structure 
uh, to make it um, to render it uh, unusable or maybe uh, to activate it or inactivate it this will happen uh, from a literature search but you can't technically search the entire space uh, the, the entire surface let's download the protein we will download it as a pdb format and i think this is it for the web browser for now and let's uh, let's say let's move the file here yeah uh, so this is the structure file the first thing we will do is we will remove or we will extract just the atoms which means we will only extract the structure of the protein we will we won't use any or we won't extract any ligands any sugar chains uh, glycosylation um, chains polysaccharides uh, water molecules nothing only the polypeptide so it's only the atoms of our structure and we'll save it temporarily as our uh, pdb uh, as a receptor uh, these files will be deleted because these are not the files we're going to use for the docking now what we will do is we will convert this file or this structure into a pdb qt file which means it's a pdb file but it has a charge for every atom uh, on the structure and we will use our uh, our script for this so um, before i continue this script has an issue which is going to be auto resolved on its own and the issue is not with the script technically it's with pymol itself so pymol as of this uh, as of recording this video still uses python 2 it doesn't use python 3 but this script is written in python in python 3 so you will have to switch between python 2 and python 3 whenever you are using pymol in our case we will comment in the pymol import uh, at line 62 and line 65 so we can use pymol with python 2 when we are not using pymol when we're using everything else we will have to comment out these two lines i know it's a little bit intertwined and it's a weird way to write a python script but that's because Py uh, pymol still uses python 2. now i coded this script this way because before i had ubuntu now i'm in ubuntu right now uh, but before i had ubuntu i was on uh, a version of arc linux called antergos and if you are familiar with uh, linux uh, arc antergos is usually bleeding edge which means i used the next iteration of pymol which uses python 3 so i coded this understanding that in several months Pyth uh, pymol will be updated and in ubuntu and we'll start using python 3. Uh, so this issue here will be more or less autocorrected in the next uh, coming months so if you are watching this sometime in the future you may not have to comment in and out these lines uh, it will probably just work fine but just make sure which pymol uh, you have what you should have is pymol 2.2 if you don't have pymol 2.2 um, you will have to comment in and out these lines if you do have pymol 2.2 then you are good to go uh, the other thing you have to install is open babel uh, so if you have a fresh in, uh, linux install you will have to write sudo apt install pymol hopefully you get 2.2 and open babel and open babel will only be used to convert the pdb files to pdb qt files and uh, it's a very good uh, program but this is the only thing we uh, th this is the only time we will use it uh, in our project just to convert the pdb to a pdb qt file and you will not have to write these commands these commands are already written in the python script so um, you just have to execute this function and i'll show you how how you will do that what we will do is we'll say python 2 because we will be using pymol and um, our script r for receptor and the r.pdb file 
And what this will do is it will, if you look at the quote, if you look at the code, it will remove all the um, water uh, molecules and it will save this temporarily as a protein file. Then it will convert this protein file into a temporary file, a, a temporary, temporary PDB QT file. And then it will just extract the polypeptide chain. And then of course it will remove everything that it generated, all the files that we don't need. So we don't keep on building a lot of junk. This will take a while because the receptor is big, well, sort of big, but uh, uh, you can expect it to take a while even with a small receptors because remember it is measuring the charge of every single atom in the PDB file. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, our PDB file is not actually quite small. It's not very small, it's, uh, yeah, it's quite big. So it will take a while. Anyway, I hope this doesn't oh, oh it's done okay it didn't crash my my computer uh, it, it shouldn't crash your computer it's fine it's just that i'm recording i'm, use, I'm heavily using the uh, the computer resources and um, sometimes when uh, uh, i do some of these computations it just shuts down uh, but luckily here it didn't anyway uh, we don't need these files anymore because now this is our receptor file this is the receptor file that we are interested in uh, and we will perform the docking on it and we can check it out um, with pymol and this is what it looks like um, and of course if i'm not mistaken the search site is going to be around here i have written the parameters which i'm going to show you how you are going to put them now the autodoc vena comes with a, a, a graphical user interface tool called autodoc tools Unfortunately, as of recording this video, Autodoc tools do not work on Ubuntu. For some reason, which I don't know why, I, can, I cannot identify it, it just doesn't work. It, when you install it and you open it, it executes and then it just doesn't open. And it's actually been like this for a while. I remember I, I, I did some docking uh, pr uh, um, runs last year and I had this issue, which is why um, I wrote this. Uh, script so this script actually only started with this function it's just the box function which is the function that draws the search box for you or it doesn't really technically draw it it just helps you search for it because in the end it's just a number uh, and then slowly I built up the other functions uh, as I found that I'm repeating the work and I, I can't remember everything so uh, so it, it technically st I technically wrote this script because the autodoc tool program doesn't work on Linux, at least and by, uh, um, w while I'm recording this video. Um, so what we are going to do now is search or, or, or uh, um, draw the box that will search uh, for the ligand. Remember, oh no, PyMol, yeah. We want a box uh, around here. Them, if I'm not mistaken, it's going to be around here somewhere. We want a box that says, we want to search this place. We don't want to search any, anywhere else. We just want to search this place. Now, how are you going to draw this box? Uh, you need its parameters. You need the, the center of the box and then how far the X, Y, Z uh, uh, sides are from the center. So you've got the X, Y, Z uh, center point and then the X, Y, Z size points. Uh, and of course, if you are familiar with um, uh, uh, protein crystal structures, this is not the 0, 0, 0 point, the 0, x, 0, y, 0, uh, z point. No, it's usually somewhere else and it changes between structures. So you have to find it every time. Now, it is it is a little bit tedious. If Autodoc tools used to, would work, you can just you know drag it with a mouse. But here, you're going to have to do it with uh, manual numbers and you have to search for it. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's a little bit tedious, but sw but once you get it, you get it. You don't have to do it again. Uh, so it's a little bit time consuming. And the code to set up PyMol so you can perform the, uh, or, or draw the box and identify the search uh, space would be PyMol and our script, then B for box and our receptor. Now, this is going to take a little bit of time. And again, I'm not sure why, but PyMol would render 
all the graphics until it allows you to use it. Again, I hope this doesn't crash my computer. Uh, it will take a while, so I might I might just cut this point of the video until it um, it starts again. We'll see. Okay, it's done. Again, I'm not sure why PyMall does this. Um, if it's uh, because an older version and this is how it opens through a script or um, maybe I wrote the script incorrectly. If someone knows, please let me know, let me know in the comments or um, or I invite you to contribute to this script and fix it. All right, um, so this is the molecule uh, and we're going to draw a search box here. Now, the way th the reason we open it through our script is because it is importing a function, the box function, and the box function will draw the center point of the box and the sides of the box, so the size. Uh, so there are six values. You have to write box with a capital B, and then if you write zero, 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 um, let's say 20, 20, 20. So zero, zero, zero is going to be the center of the, so, uh, uh, you know, the center of the axis. So zero X, zero Y, zero Z, and then uh, 20, 20 angstroms from uh, the center of the X. So it will be 10 angstroms on the, uh, on one side, and sorry, uh, 20 angstroms on each side. Uh, and then 20 angstroms on each side of the y axis and 20 angstroms on each side of the z axis from the center point. I mean, uh, if, if I had a pen and paper, I would draw it, but I hope you can visualize it. And if we execute it, we should get a box. And here's a box. You can see this is the center point, and uh, this is the x axis, and uh, 20, uh, 20 angstrom this way, 20 angstrom this way, and then the y axis. 20 angstrom this way, 20 angstrom this way, and then the Z axis, 20 angstrom, 20 angstrom, yeah. Uh, obviously, this is just a, a demo of what the box looks like. Of course, if you don't know these parameters, you're going to have to do it uh, manually. So you will have to delete this and delete this and then start again. Let's say, for example, um, 12, um, 11, and maybe, I don't know, five and then we'll say two maybe two is too thin let's say 15 um six and i don't know 10 maybe this will be the search space um no so let's move the box um a little bit let's see where it goes um okay so this is the x-axis let's move it up a bit should be um 12 uh, okay, so this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, this is x, this is y, and if we do 15, it should come out this way, this way, up like that. Oops. Yeah, this is 15. Um, so you can see it will take a long time for you until you identify where the center of the box is, and of course then you have to decide the size of the box. and. Uh, be easier if you just delete the sides because you can't redraw them it just draws them once and it does take a while uh, because you're doing it manually you're, you're, you're literally counting every angstrom but once you do it um, uh, you don't have to do it again once you identify the search box you don't have to do it again um, in our case our search box I, it took me a while to do identify but it's going to be uh, 0, 0, 10, 15, 15, 15. Let me delete this, you can visualize it. There we go. This is the search space. So we are going to search this space. And as I mentioned, I, I think what we're going to get is binding around this void here. Let's check it with the surface. Uh, um, surface graphics yeah there's a hole here and we will get binding in this hole over here this, this is the hole yeah so uh, this step is just so you can identify these numbers you're not going to execute you're not going to export anything this 
uh, step is just so you can identify these numbers and these numbers are going to be the center x center y center z and then the side x side y side z or size size x size y size z values and if you look at the autodoc vena documentation it asks you for these numbers so this entire process that i just showed you is just so you can identify these numbers you can then just close this and you won't have to do it again once you identify these numbers now that we have the receptor and we've identified the numbers we know that it's 0 0 0 10 15 15 15 now we have to download our ligands and our ligands are going to be in the zinc 15 database so it's going to be if i, if I remember correctly it's going to be zinc yeah 15 docking.org then we pop into tranches and choose the 3d representations now Now, Zinc uh, 15, so Zinc uh, 2015, um, is the updated version of the Zinc database, which was much smaller. You can see here, we have more or less 500 million um, structures. So this is very, 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 very large. It is extremely difficult to search all of them. 507 million structures, and that's not all of them. These are the 3D uh, structures. There is more. If you want to search the two-dimensional structures, it's like more, more than a billion. So it's it, it's very challenging to search all of them, especially when you when you see now when we start um, writing the command for Autodoc Vena, it will probably take around five minutes for each structure. So you can count how long it will take you. Some people might ask, okay, why don't we do it through a supercomputer? And if you have access to a supercomputer and you are allowed to hog it for like a month or two, you're a very lucky person. You can uh, run, you, you can brute force the entire database and search for the molecule that binds your uh, structure. But again, even with a supercomputer, it's extremely challenging. Uh, you will require thousands of CPUs, a lot of time and a lot of patience. And some supercomputer users will not appreciate you hogging the entire supercomputer for a, for a long time, such as a month or two months. So what you have to do is some educated guessing. We're not going to do that here. Uh, educated guessing is a totally different field and um, it's not part of coding or running Autodoc Vena. You have to identify the, the, the molecule you want, you have to identify whether it, if, it's, if you want it um, mild or uh, extremely reactive with a lot of side effects, if you want to uh, wait for it or uh, you want it immediately, if you find or if you want uh, if you found the molecule you want to purchase it immediately or maybe have them um, synthesize it for you, it's pH and the charge on it, um, and, and so you, th th there's some parameters that you want to choose. Uh, you can choose everything, of course, but it, it, uh, I, I don't recommend you brute forcing the entire uh, database. You can, you can, you can technically, you technically can, but if you find the computational power. Um, here are some um, recommendations: the Goldilocks um, uh, subset, the short subset, the small uh, small subsets, uh, the big and greasy subset, you know, very, very large, very greasy molecules. Again, so these things, the uh, zinc uh, authors sort of help you to identify or at least segment your search until you find what you're looking for. What we're going to do is we are going to choose the 3D representation, uh, just the anodynes. So anodyne means uh, extremely mild, more or less very mild side effects. Um, only the annotated exclusively. Sorry, I'm going to choose that. all of it. Yeah. And we are going to exclusively want only the anodynes and then the, if I remember correctly, just the reference and then the no charge. We just, we don't want any charge. Now, again, there is 
266,000 structures and I can't run all these, so even though you can see they're very minimal, very minimal compared to 500 million. Um, they're still large for my little tiny computer. I'm on a MacBook Pro uh, 2011, so it's a tiny laptop with very limited resources. Let's look at the resources here. Um, four CPUs, a little bit of RAM. So it's, you know, it's, it's a laptop. So I can't run a proper virtual screen with this, this, mon m this amount of structures on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Identi I, I've already, I already know where the, where the, um, the best molecule is. Uh, so I'm going to just remove everything else and try to just search that area. Um, yeah, this area here. So it's easier to find, yeah, this one here. Again, 9,000 structures is, Still a lot for me, but we're, I'm going to trim it down. Let's go and download it. We'll ask for a, the, uh, for a PDB QT. So instead of converting every single every single ligand from a PDB to a PDB QT file, Zinc the the Zinc uh, fifteen authors already provided in PDB QT. So that saves us a lot of time. And I'm going to download using wget and just flat without any directories. Uh, you can choose a, a date if you want to update, if, if you've already downloaded it and you want a, a tranche that is updated and you don't want to download an already downloaded uh, uh, tranche. Um, so you can specify a date here, but I'm not going to do that. We just download it. Now what we are going to download is the wget file, which is why it's very quick. If we look here, let's us move the uh, wget file. Wget, let's move it here. Yeah. So if we move it, we we'll see it's just a command. It's just a command that says wget this file and open it as this file. Of course, if you have many tranches you will get many different commands so the best thing to do is just run this command now you can just run this command and it will download the tranche as a, uh, a compressed file um, the script here does a little bit of extra work things that you in, in, it will do the extra work instead of you doing it every time so what would what it will do Where's the function? It's the download function, yeah. It will download every um, command. So it will run through the, the, uh, the script and download all the commands. But what it will also do is combine. So first of all, it will download, it will, it will unzip what it has downloaded and then combine all the ligands and or all the tranches into one large file. It's easier to handle if you have one single file then it will renumber the ligands. Let's do that. And what we will end up with, and the way to do it, oh yeah, before we before we start, we have to comment out PyMol, otherwise it will not work because we're no longer using PyMol and now we are going to use Python 3. So Python 3, auto doc, uh, Python script, and then we are going to say, download and this file let's copy this file and we'll download it I have to download I have to copy the entire thing yeah there we go so now it's downloading it and once it's stop once it stops it will uh, unzip it uh, uncompress it and then it will combine all its content into one single file. There we go. So this is one single file. It has renumbered them. Uh, you can see it's a very large file. It has slightly, le slightly more than 9,000 structures. It takes a while to open, but it has renumbered them. So it, it gives you one single file that is extremely organized. Uh, every single model, model one, model two, model three.
we have we can delete this now we've got our zinc 15 pdb qt uh, uh, list of ligands um let's see how its size should be around okay it's 36 megabytes all right so it's large and that's only one tranche so um if you're going to run something like 3000 4000 ligands it's going to be larger than than this much larger than this now autodoc vena cannot loop through all of these it cannot loop through them you have to segment each ligand into a separate file that's why i decided to write a function that gives me one single file it's much easier to handle one single file if you want to upload it to a server if you want to transfer it or back it up or do whatever you want with it it's much easier to transfer one file this file contains 9,000 or slightly more than 9,000 ligands. It's a pain to handle 9,000 ligands, and I'm just doing a demonstration. If you have hundreds of thousands of ligands, it would be very difficult handling, moving, copying, del even de just deleting uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, files. So I have this file now, but I can't use it. I have to segment it. So I've written a different uh, function a different function that will segment the files according to your need and it's called split and what it will do it will take a file name and a directory uh, well uh, you know you have to name a directory to put everything in it you give it a prefix and a limit so what it will do it will loop through this file it will loop through every single molecule and it says okay this is molecule number one molecule number uh, this uh, this entire thing is molecule number one put it in a file then molecule number two, put it in a file. No molecule number three, four, put them in a file. And once you reach a limit, make a new directory. That way you not only segment this file, but also segment the files into separate directories. This helps you when you want to run your search in an array. You'll see later on what I mean. Instead of having everything in one directory, which sometimes also crashes the Linux operating system because it has a limit to how much items you can have in a directory, you segment them. In our case, what we will do is the following. We will say Python 3, uh, our script, and then we will say uh, segment s, tag s, and then the zinc15.pdbqt file and let's segment them into 24 segments uh, sorry 24 files per directory so every directory will have 24 structures let me show you what i mean there we go so it has made a directory called ligands and when you open it you will find 376 files or i'm sorry 376 directories and each directory will have 24 structures 24 structures here yeah, you can see 24 structures um, so this uh, uh, helps you this makes it much easier for you to handle such a large quantity of ligands you can uh, decide that you for example your uh, supercomputer I don't know what's happening here and okay, don't send uh, your supercomputer might have 24 cores per node so you say, okay, I'm going to divide my uh, ligands into 24 ligands per directory. And then I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to use five nodes. And I know each node has 24 CPUs. So you can perform um, this. Um, uh, you, you can loop through all these ligands in literally five minutes because you can array it, array it into different um nodes with different CPUs all running at the same time. If your if if your uh, uh, high performance computer structure has, for example, um, um, I don't know, l l for example, let's say fifty cores per node. You say, okay, instead of having twenty four, let's make them fifty. Make makes it easier. Or for example, let's say, okay, I am I will have for each directory a hundred thousand. Uh, structures because I will loop, I will use a node and I'm going to loop through them not just in five minutes but maybe for a month. So again, it depends on your high performance computer structure architecture. It depends on how you want to loop through them, which way you think is much more efficient. That's why I well, that's why I wrote that um, that uh, function. So from this function, I know that. Um, we, we we don't need all the files. I think we will, we're going to remove some of them. Yes, we will remove 
most of them except well, let's choose let's choose all of them except for uh 21 22 and 23 yeah we remove all of these because i know that my legend of interest is in one of these so i've, I've got 24 24 24 and let's let's just rename them to one two and three again you won't be doing this obviously uh, i'm just doing this rename them renaming them segmenting what i need because i'm performing a demonstration obviously you won't go through this step because you don't know where your ligand is i know where my ligand is for the demonstration but you don't know so you have to search through all the ligands that you've downloaded all right next step is to generate the pbs file so the computer architecture that i use has pbs as the job scheduler um that's why i have the pbs function i want to write one for slurm and i know most supercomputers use slurm so this will take the center point for x y z and then the size of x y z you know these are the numbers for the box which we use pymol to search for then the seed the seed or the random seed that uh, is the starting point of the random number that allows you to uh, um, perform the monte carlo search um, if you leave it empty autodoc will always use a random number uh, if you fix it it will always start with the same number and you want to start with the same number to perform a virtual screen you want you don't want to start from a certain number when you are confirming what you're observed so um, when you increase exhaust uh, uh, exhaust number and you, I'll explain this later when, when, when the time comes. The exhaustion number, the higher you are, the more, uh, the more thorough you try to perform your simulation. For a virtual screen, we will use a very small number, so you can, um, you, you can simulate many different ligands very quickly. If you identify a ligand, you want a very high exhaust number, so you can simulate it much more accurately accurately but just that ligand or only few ligands uh, an output file um sometimes you want an output file sometimes you don't want an output file because it generates a lot of um generates a lot of files and in a virtual screen i suggest you put this as false otherwise you'll be you'll, you'll just drown in files um how many cpus we are going to use four cpus well technically it's just one cpu one cpu divided into four cores which is my system as you can uh, as i've shown you before i'm not going to run an array and my email um so let's do that we will say python 3 our script and then p for pbs oh sorry no j for job i i specifically did that so i can update it um so it can use either pbs or slurm and we'll say 0, 0, 0, 50, and I'll say 0, 0, 10, 15, 15, 15. Then uh, 10 for the seed. Uh, sorry, what was it uh, before the seed? There was a, yeah, 10 for the seed and 10 for the exhaustion. Yeah, exhaustion. Uh, only 10 because we're performing a virtual screen. Uh, otherwise, it would be 256 uh, for something much more thorough. False. Uh, because I don't want an output, I'll explain to you why now. And then uh, we will going to be we will use one core uh, because I'm using the others to record this uh, uh, video. And then uh, again, what was it? Uh, yeah, um, three for the array because I'm going to use one, two, three nodes. And then my email. Let's say example.com it doesn't matter because uh it's something for the supercomputer um again if you have a supercomputer and you're running this for a month you want to be notified when it has uh, finished otherwise you'll be you know checking it every day this is the pbs file and from the pbs file you can see that it has generated the text required to run the virtual screen on a supercomputer the supercomputer what will happen is that it will um this is my email it will it will use that type of cpu architecture 
it will use tw it has 24 CPUs per node and I'm going to use three nodes at the same time I'm going to array it into three nodes which means I'm going to request three nodes each with 24 CPUs and that is why I decided that I'm going to segment my ligands to have uh, three directories and each directory has 24 items 24 ligands and as you can see the ligands are named by their name not the, the, the not just sequential numbers so if you open this you will see this is the name so it's much easier for you to identify which um, ligand binds to your protein or which is the correct ligand or which the which is the best ligand that binds to your protein because in the end the result will give you that name and if you lose your data whatever uh, you can recover if you just recover that name that's all you need you can just uh, uh, re-download that name from the zinc file um, uh, so i think zinc 15 uh, database so again you'll understand why i'm making this point uh, i'm stressing out this point because if you look at the end of the pbs file I've decided that I'm I don't want an output and the output basically is another PDB file PDB QT file and that PDB QT file is the structure of the ligand bound to our receptor if I am going to loop through 300,000 400,000 ligands I don't want additional 300 400,000 uh, structures uh, uh, which I know probably 99% of them are not going to be the ideal structure for me. I don't want to look at it. I don't need to look at them. I'm performing a virtual screen. So I've decided that, okay, no, I don't want an output. What I want is just the result. And what will happen here is after every loop, this is a loop, this is a bash loop. After every loop, I'm going to extract just the bound number, the highest bound number from the simulation, and I'm going to add it into a table. And in the end, the table will tell me it will be sorted. And here it will be where is it? Uh, it's going to be sorted. Well, sorry, no, probably somewhere else. Um, I have a different function for it. I just remembered. Um, it, it will be sorted into a table. It tells you the name of the ligand and how much it's bound. The name of the ligand and how much it's bound. And the top is the best ligand that you have. So I've this uh, again. I wrote this script specifically to make life much easier and much easier to reproduce your results if you want to continue if you want to replicate your work if you want to uh, test different receptors if you have different projects that's why i i have it in this type of architecture i have set it up this way we are not going to run this script here because this script doesn't run on my local computer i don't have a supercomputer uh, i'm sorry i'm not on a supercomputer i'm on a laptop so what we're going to do is I'm going to set up everything, but then instead of running this particular script, I have a similar script that is designed for this laptop. Well, not just this laptop, it's designed for a laptop. It's designed for uh, a machine that is not a high performance computer. So what we're going to do now is we will download Autodog Vino. Remember, all we have done now is just prepared our files. We have the receptor file, uh, we don't need this anymore because we've converted it into ligands. So that's fine. We can delete this. We've got our ligands and we've got our, well, basically the command, the command that is going to use Autodoc Vino, interceptor, ligands, and command. Now we need the actual program, Autodoc Vino. So we will go to Autodoc uh, Vino, search on Google, and, we re and we'll find Autodoc Vino from the Script Institute, and we can just download it. And the beautiful thing about Autodoc Vina is you don't have to compile it. That's one of the nice things about Autodoc Vina. You just download it as it is and it works. It's a binary. And again, I'm not sure if this is good or bad, but at least it's very easy to use. I've, I've used it on a local computer. I've used it on a server. I've used it on two different uh, high performance computers. It just works. It's brilliant. So let's uh, copy the Let's, uh, let's move from uh, downloads, it's going to be Vina, if not, not. Um, Autodoc, yeah, and we'll move it here. And let's just extract it. See, it's, it's a very tiny file, it's very small. And it has a license, of course, you can read the license. It's, a, it's an Apache license and then the binary here. And we don't want split. Um, this is a different way of splitting the, the ligands. If I remember correctly, we just want Vino. 
that's all we need we can delete the rest and now we are ready to go if you check we can see that we can just write, uh, run vena on its own and i think tac edge will give us a help it is exactly it just works you don't have to compile it you don't have to install anything the file works in isolation on its own it's brilliant so now we are ready to run a simulation a docking simulation now as i said this code here is specifically designed for a supercomputer now uh, basically what it happen wh what happens here is it uh, it requests 24 cpus from a single node and then this loop forcefully makes every single cpu perform one loop so one cpu does this loop the second cpu does the same loop on a different list of ligands um, that's because autodoc vena by default if you do not specify the number of cpus it will use every available cpu it will combine them all uh it will, so it can combine its power to perform the simulation faster uh, in a virtual screen we want as many cpus as possible we don't want to combine cpus therefore we will we will request one cpu and then forcefully uh, uh, make uh, bash request that this loop is performed on one cpu and then again on the second and again on the third and again on the fourth and each cpu will have a different list of ligands to run through so it's basically you're taking one large list if if let's say we have uh, 100,000 ligands uh, we will divide this 100,000 ligand uh, into 24 segments and each segment will be performed by one loop uh, sorry by one um, cpu um, we are not going to run this today because this is designed for a high performance computer but i have a command that is specifically designed for a local computer now i forgot to add it uh, to the um, script so i added it here and i just made sure that it works i just confirmed that it works and this entire very long very long very long command uh, will perform very sim something very very similar to that uh, script here so we don't need the script um, anymore because we we're not going to run our simulation on a high performance computer if i take this command i can open it up for you so you can see what it does here this is a for this is a bash for loop that says do uh, this and then for every single item on um on all the directories and all the items uh this is going to be the, the sorry uh, this is going to be the name this is going to be um a temporary name oh temporary name and the name of the file without the extension and then this is the command it's going to say this is the receptor receptor.pdbq this is the file and this uh, the ligand and this is the file that's going to be within these uh, directories the out is going to be the name of the ligand plus dot out so you know that this is the uh, output file and the log uh, basically the log is just going to log exactly what is uh, being printed in the terminal the exhaustiveness as we said is going to be only 10 because we're performing a virtual screen so we want to loop through them very quickly the center x is zero the center y is zero the center z is 10 remember we did that from the box that we uh, uh, we search through using pymol they send the size of the x is 15 angstrom the size of the y is 15 the size of the z is 15. now here what's going to happen is that we are going to extract one specific piece of information from the log file so after the uh, the simulation is done and the log file is completed is completed and saved we will go to the log file and we will extract only the line the top line that contains the strongest bound value because we are running the simulation randomly it's a monte carlo simulation which means we will take a random configuration of the ligand and bind it to the um to the location um to, within the search box to the ligand and then using the autodoc um, energy function we will measure the binding energy uh, and we co we keep on repeating that and if we have a very high value for exhaustiveness uh, this repetition will be performed many times many 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 times and therefore the the we will more likely get an accurate value of the ligand binding to its receptor 
technically because our energy function is not perfect. But on a virtual screen, we don't have this, this luxury. We want to loop through the ligands as fast as we can, but uh, we, we don't want to also compromise quality because maybe we um, we loop through, we, um, we pass through a ligand that correctly binds to our uh, to our receptor, uh, but because of the low exhaustive exhaustiveness, the random number just doesn't uh, give us the correct structure to bind. So we don't want to pass on that ligand. So usually it's better to use um, exhaustiveness of 10, which is considered very low. What will happen is that once we run through all the ligands, we will take maybe the, in our case, we'll just take the lowest uh, value. The lowest binding value means it's the, the lowest value, the most negative number, which means it is the strongest bound li uh, ligand to the receptor. And then we will rerun this command, but using 256 uh, exhaustiveness, exhaustiveness value. And this should give us a much more accurate binding value to the receptor. Of course, as I said, the ultimate way you have to check is to actually bind the ligand to the receptor on the wet lab. But using this method, at least you are going to get rid of several thousand ligands that you know mathematically they're not going to bind to your receptor. So there's no reason to purchase them, no reason to spend all this money, time, energy, and manpower binding them to the ligand. You just do this virtually on the computer. And then for the ones that you suspect probably will bind, that these are the ones that you purchase. And then um, you test them, you realistically test them in the wet lab. So use this tool as a guide, use it as a filter to filter out the obviously logically wrong ligands and then just concentrate on the possibly logically correct ligands. Uh, so yeah, so this awk command is going to, sorry, this awk command is going to um, basically just make a list in this log file, sorry, sorry, in this temporary file, it will make a temporary file of the list of all the ligands once they're done. And then once we finish, so this is done, once we finish the loop, we are going to sort this temp file. So we're going to sort it and then we're just going to remove everything else that is that is not of our concern and we will end up with a result and the result is basically just going to be a table with every single ligand and its best value bound to that receptor and then you can and it's sorted so the top ligand will be the best ligand of course that's why we sort it so what you should end up with is just one file with a summary of the simulation of course if you don't want a summary, if you uh, or if you want to, uh, the actual log files, you can just delete these files here. Uh, sorry, de delete these commands. So you don't. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah. Um, no, I'm sorry. You're not going to. They're not going to be del deleted. They're going to be. Uh, you. you th they're going to remain. So, if you don't want the log files, you can replace this with rm. Anyway, this command is found in the script. I've just added it. It didn't, it wasn't there, but uh, I forgot to add it, but I've added it now. And, <coughs> and uh, we'll use it now to run a simulation. So let's prepare everything. And when I come to run the simulation, it's going to take a very long time. So I'm going to speed through it. Um, so let's go. Okay, the computation is done. As expected, it took a long time. It took overnight to complete, and that's just for 72 structures. 
imagine if you had several hundred thousand uh, structures, how long it would take, which is why I have set up uh, the function that can write you a, um, a high performance computer job scheduling file with that utilizes, of course, many different uh, CPUs and uh, cores. Now the command will generate a lot of output files and log files. And this command at the very end of it, it moves everything into a directory. So it makes a directory that's called logs and then moves all the log files and all the output files into the logs file. Of course, if you are going to use a high performance computer, the setup I have made would just delete them. It delete the log files and output files as they are generated. But in our case, it is stored here. Again, that's because you are running a local computation. And one of the ways you want to run a local computation, you might want the output files, which is ju it's just the structures, but in different configurations. I'm going to give you an example now. And the log files are just the output of the terminal. Now, this is the, the best uh, binding value, uh, the, lo the smallest value. And the awk command, which I showed you, extracts this file only. And of course, it adds the name of the uh, ligand next to it. And it combines everything, then sorts them in the results file as such. So these are 72, 72 ligands. And you can see the best simulated binding of each ligand. And then it sorts them. So you get the best ligand at the top. This should make everything easy for you and helps you and so it, it, it it's designed to relieve much of the manual work from you you just have to concentrate on the actual innovative part of this experiment rather than the mundane usual routine aspect of it you know sorting this taking that out collecting all the numbers together anyway um so let's look at these files these files, let, let's look at this output file. Um, let's look at the largest, uh, the, the best um, ligand. So it's this one. Let's copy the name, search for it here. This is it. So this is the log file and you can see it's the best, the, the best predicted bound is minus 8.8 .8 kilocalories per mole. And this is the output file. So this is the simulated structure. Let's copy paste it. Copy? Yes, copy paste it here. And let's open now if we open this on its own, it will only show us the uh, ligand. And uh, I'm sorry, um, can be that PDB. PDB. Sorry. Uh, QT. There we go. And you can look at the different structures. Now, this is just the structure of the ligand. What we need is to open it with the receptor. So let's open both of them in PyMo. Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, in PyMo. There we go. As you can see, it predicted this simulation and this binding. And of course, the best bound structure is the first one. It, it organizes it for you as such that the first structure is the best structure. Um, let's look at them at surface mode. So there we go. I hope you can visualize it. Let me see if I can show it here. Yeah, you can see it's snuggled right in. And if you look at the different structures, you can see the different orientations and each orientation would have a different value. But the first one is the best value. So this is how we perform a virtual screen. Again, the best way in my point of view would be that you, you run a virtual screen and you sort, you sift through all these ligands and you take, for example, maybe the top 10 ligands and then instead of simulating them using exhaustiveness value 10, maybe, maybe increase the value to 256. It will take a much longer time, but it should give you a, mo a more accurate result. And then from these accurate results, you might choose maybe, let's say the top three, purchase the ligands, and then 
measure the binding in the lab. So you have to synthesize the protein and purchase the, or if you have the, uh, the capability of synthesizing it, synthesizing the ligand, and then actually measuring the binding using, uh, using SPR, surface plasmon, surface plasmon resonance, or um, ITC, uh, isothermic calorimetry, the titration calorimetry um, protocols. And hopefully this will give you a, a, an accurate result of what you're doing, of what's, um, what's the best molecule to bind to your protein. Again, Autodoc Vena is very useful as a guide. It should guide you. So all these results, from these results, you can see that they're actually quite good results. You know, at, at these values, this is, this is not so bad, actually. But you can sift through many different molecules and say, okay, there's no reason to test any of these. It's predicted that it's not going to bind adequately enough. Uh, these probably will. At least I have a value that shows me a uh, good binding, so I'll just con concentrate my efforts onto these ligands, and I'll, uh, I'll guide my research in that direction. So I hope you found that useful. I'm so um, again, you, you you can see that the commands are are, are they're easy. They're, you don't have to stick to this steps. Um, you don't have to stick to these steps. These are my steps. So I would go through these steps this way. Uh, it's just a guideline. You can you can write a different loop if you want. If you if you wrote a different loop, you will still get similar results. You sh again, you won't get exactly the same results because the search is stochastic. So even if I run this again, I will get slightly different results, which is expected. But the idea is that my setup is not the best setup. It's just my setup. And I'm just communicating that to you. If you find a better setup or one that works for you, at least um, that goes with your note taking, your lab notes, with your um, with the, the way you see, you determine that the that type, that particular type of experiment is logical, then by all means set up your own system. It's just uh, the commands, the strings organized in a certain way. So for me, it's easier to perform the virtual screen using the setup. Anyway, I hope this was useful. If you have any comments, please uh, uh, write them below. Any questions, I'll try to answer them. Thank you.